We know from the field of nanoparticles, which is an emerging field of research, which is very fascinating because we're seeing many applications, uh, not only in engineering, but also in medicine. Uh, there's some new drugs that are using this to uh, target delivery of, of cancer drugs using uh, uh, nanoparticles. So the idea that homeopathy could be using a similar mechanism is uh, quite interesting. Uh, so that's an active field of research. Nanoparticles is an active field of research right now, and uh, it is actively being pursued by Professor, Professor Iris Bell in the States and others. Um, it's promising. Um, there are some issues that need to be resolved, but uh, definitely a very exciting field. One other theory which um, I prone and um, I think is also very promising is one theory that was originally also championed by people like uh, Jacques Benveniste and more recently by Nobel Prize laureate uh, Luc Montagnier and this is the theory of uh, quantum coherence domains and this was uh, proposed by an uh, Italian theoretician called Dr. Preparata from Milan and uh, he put forward the idea that <clears throat> you could have uh, the so-called quantum coherence domains in a material where you have dipoles, uh, such as water, form, water forms uh, dipoles. And uh, the idea here is that these quantum coherence domains would be um, small um, domains, say of about 25 nanometers in diameter, where water would be locked in in a specific uh, structure and reminiscent of what could happen, uh, say, in superfluids, where you have this locking in of a, of a quantum state. So here you would have a, a, a locking in of a quantum state on a, on a smaller scale, on a scale of 25 nanometers, which would be able to uh, register information about its environment, say the environment of a protein. And that, uh, when, uh, because it registers information, it would uh, be able to carry that information through the succussion process, dilution succussion process, due to the fact that it's inherently water, it can copy itself through the dilution process and then be given uh, back to the patient and there um, uh, elicit a biological response. Basically, the so quantum coherence domain is a theory that's uh, an expansion on Feynman's uh, quantum electrodynamics. So quantum electrodynamics is a theory that explains the interaction of light with uh, matter, in particular electrons. So we use it everywhere uh, today. Uh, this theory was uh, um, from Dr. Feynman, uh, for which he got the Nobel Prize. Um, now, Preparata expanded this theory to the special case where you don't have just one charge, such as an electron, but where you have a separation of charge, say a minus and a plus, uh, such that you have um, so it's a separation of charge, which is called a dipole, and you have this separation of charge in water molecules. So the two sides of the water molecules tend to have a positive and a negative charge. This forms a dipole. And when you have, when you think about what happens when dipole associate themselves, such as water molecule associating themselves, and you look at that in the context of quantum mechanics, you get quantum coherence domains, or you get the theory of that. And then the predictions from this theory are that small domains of water will form and will be stable, stable water structures at room temperature that will be quantum in nature. And by the very nature of this quantum nature, they would uh, be able to not suffer from um, loss of information because we, they're not dissipative in the way that normal um, structures would be. So they would be able to register information of an electromagnetic nature, so frequencies basically. So these frequencies, the ideas and these frequencies would be able to interact with the frequencies that are present in uh, biological systems, frequencies such as the frequency of um, enzymatic reactions. So all cat catalytic uh, sites in enzymes and other uh, mole biological molecules have specific frequencies at which they function. And we know from experimentation that if you um, uh, play around with these frequencies, if you zap them at the right frequency, that can enhance 
or hinder their biological activity. And we suspect this might be one way that they're interacting with the human body. Quantum coherence domains, if they exist, predate any um, life. So what we think it might be happening here is that life evolved within the presence of these quantum coherence domains. So it is very possible, and if they exist, quite, then quite likely, that biology evolved around quantum coherence domains and actually uses quantum coherence domains in ways that we are still to discover. In particular, the, the idea that biology might have evolved to be very sensitive to these subtle signals coming from the quantum coherence domains that would tell it about things that are happening somewhere else in the body. Because uh, the quantum coherence domain would be able to register the presence of a, of a foreign body, say, and deliver that information somewhere else in terms of these electromagnetic frequencies and then elicit from the, 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 the biological system a response, a rapid response, to something it's been able to detect that way. The quantum coherence domains would be able to capture information specific to proteins and to many substances through the very, the very specific frequencies that are present in these substances. What we understand from the predictions of the theory is that quantum domains with carrying similar information would tend to clump together. So these clumping together also acts as a mechanism that would lock the information in these uh, domains.